Hello and welcome back. So this is how we left things at the end of the last video. We've got the counter address registers in and we've got the increment and decrement functionality. And I've got a problem. I am running out of space. The mount I use for the camera for, for these shots is at its highest level. I think I could probably uh, get one more breadboard in here. But uh, yeah, it's just going to be a problem. So there's going to be some future videos where I'm probably just zooming in on parts because everything's getting a bit small. So I don't think I can uh, zoom it out any any more than I have done. But uh, in the short term, I want to create a bit of space. So we've got five of these counter registers and four GPRs. And we've got the constant register here. And what I'd like to do is get the constant register onto a board here because I think this will clean up some wire and it will free up a, a breadboard just where we need it for um, for the bus control logic we've got to add to the address register stack. So this is a spare PCB for a GPR because you get more than four when you have them made. But I'm thinking if we can get the constant register onto a board this size, that's going to be nice and neat. The constant register actually only has two chips. So just the same as we did on the breadboard, I'm going to stick a, a bus display in there. Okay, let's, um, let's design up a PCB. Okay, I'm going to use the general purpose register as a base because there's a lot in common and it will save quite a bit of time. So we've still got the main bus, which is what we're going to assert to. With no need of the LHS and RHS buses. But we are going to have the memory data. Because the big difference between a general purpose register and the constant register is it's for immediate data that comes directly off the memory data bus. So it loads from there and asserts back to the main bus. So that the register portion, we connect the memory data bus to. The output portion still goes straight to the main bus. We don't need these assert to LHS or assert to RHS lines anymore. Okay, we've only got a need for a load and a to main. And just as when we did this on the breadboard, that's going to leave us with a whole lot of spare space. So I'm going to take the opportunity to put a main bus display on. We've only got the two chips. Uh, so only two decoupling capacitors we need. And that is the schematic for it done. I want this to be exactly the same size as the general purpose registers.
All right, doesn't look quite as impressive as some of the others, but we knew it was going to be a simple board. As much as possible, I've matched the layout of the general purpose registers because it's going to sit beside them. Okay, and here are the boards. You always order these 10 at a time. I can't see myself using uh, very many of these. This board does look empty, but it will save us you know, like a whole breadboard on the, uh, the build, so uh, it's gonna be worth doing. Okay, so I think this is done. Time to give it a test. Okay, just got to add the socket for the new constant register and some terminals at the end to pick up the contacts. Okay, so these eight lines in the main bus, which we want in the constant register on the GPRs, VCC and ground we want, but on the GPRs, the next eight lines are LHS, then RHS, and we want MEM data here. So I'm gonna cut these eight tracks on the strip board. I've cut those two as well by accident, but that doesn't matter to us at all. These two will have to wait till we've connected these buses up. I'm going to uh, reorganise the desk and, uh, and bring the main board back. OK, let's see if we can get this thing back together. Okay, so this green line here is the constant load. This is memory data going to the constant register. And this is 
the main bus that goes off to the ALU. We plugged it into the other side of the constant register just to pick up the line. And these two are the LHS and RHS buses for the ALU inputs. That was the main bus pickup from the constant register. So then this, this white line is the load line for the constant register. Let's just disconnect that for a while. I've been using this little board to uh, connect two DuPont cables together. So I think I can rescue this old one that was taking the memory data up there and, uh, and get rid of that. I do wish I'd thought of putting heat shrink onto this wire in the same way I did on this one. It made it a lot neater. Okay, so I do have a little mini DuPont cable that I made up for the control lines on the constant register. You're not, probably not able to see this, but I'm just plugging the main bus from the ALU into the bottom of the uh, register stack here. And I need memory data to go around to the constant register. Okay, this seems to have made it a little bit neater. Less of a mess of wires around here. Now obviously everything on this breadboard now is now redundant because it's replaced with the circuit down here. Assuming this works. That's a sequence of increments and decrements that we used in the last video. I believe there is a constant load coming up here. So when it gets here, it should load into the constant register. And then when it gets here, it should copy from the constant register into, I think it was B, this program code did. That's correct. Okay, that's loaded correctly, but we seem to have both LEDs on. Okay, so load is an active low. So if I bring it low, the light comes on. If I bring it high, it's off. I'm sure that that was definitely the constant load. OK, this is slightly embarrassing because I'm troubleshooting an issue that doesn't exist. The circuit is working correctly. The only actual problem is that the load LED is coming on at the wrong time. The reason for that is quite simple. The latch chips that I'm using to implement these registers load on a rising edge and when I made the circuit that drives the constant load I went with the logical circuit of an AND gate so the selection line from the control unit is ANDed with the clock in order to drive that signal appropriately. So that means that the signal spends most of its time off and comes high when the constant needs to be loaded. But most of these other registers have lines that are held high and then are brought low immediately before they, they need to load. Then when the, re the line returns to high, they perform their load. That's been predominantly done because the lines from the demultiplexer chips are more suited to working like that. So that the only real error here is that the load line LED is designed to come on when the line drops low preempting the return to a high state when it will perform its action. Now I'm going to rework the circuit now and swap that AND gate for a NAND gate and then swap the clock from the inverted clock back to the regular clock and that will make it work in the same way that the demultiplexers are working and then the load LED that we've put on this board will 
operate correctly. And more importantly, the operation of the signal lines will match what's going on on the other registers. This is a NAND gate, which should produce the opposite of what we had, which is actually what we want. What's curious is the ground line is not in the correct location. So I'm presuming it wasn't in the correct location for the last chip, but we do have a NAND gate in the correct lines there. So there's the load A instruction. So that's staying high. So this control line should come on when we clock it, which means this will come high. That will drop to low. But then when I release the clock for the second half of the cycle, we should get a low signal. No, it will go, yeah. I think I need the opposite clock as well. Yeah, I'm in the, I'm in the wrong clock here. Now we get correct behavior. So now it will load a zero. And at long last, it's working correctly again. Okay, pull out all of this extra junk. Okay, so the two areas where I could work next is I've freed up the space here to do some additional driver logic for all of these control lines on the address registers that we're not using. It's predominantly the control lines for transferring them around between each other and for controlling which is going to assert to the bus. Plus we've got reset and the clock we've got to still take care of. So yeah, so we've got assert to bus, assert to transfer bus, load from transfer bus, um, clock and clear, which we're just going to use for reset. Still got to finish off the ALU. I'm still waiting for some stuff to uh, to do that. So I think we'll do the bus control next time I'm working on this processor. All right, well, thanks for watching. Goodbye.